Did you did you guys know that IGN gave Demon Slayer a really, really low rating? Maybe it's deserved, maybe it's not. Mr. Moist Critical himself is going on a rant about <laughs> uh, IGN anime review rabbit hole. Let's check it out. 10. Someone said they gave him a 5 out of 10. 5 or 3 out of 10? Demon Slayer Season 4 Review. Let's just skip to the end. Okay. Oh, they did give it a 3 out of 10. Awful. <laughs> Demon Slayer Hashida training arc sacrifices momentum and depth for an absurdly long and meandering season that could have been a montage. Are they wrong hey. though? Ho are they wrong though? No, 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 no. Hold up, hold up. Don't let your bias get on there. I think that might be a based comment, a good summary about the season itself. Because what is the Hashira training arc? It was a goddamn movie that got straight for fucking eight episodes. I honestly don't think that's a harsh take. I think that's a very critical take, what, uh, and, and it's exactly what happened. Many episodes were stretched out. There was pointless filler going on. Last episode was hype, absolutely. But like, there were some episodes where it's just like, this doesn't need to happen. The anime original scenes with the Hashiras might have been good, but there was also a lot of moments that it was bad. I don't think that this is a crazy take. IGN rarely gets it right, but honestly, they're not far off. I thought this season fucking okay. sucked until the final episode too. Exactly. Legitimately, it could have just been a montage, but it was an entire filler season. Uh, and I'm not a manga reader, but someone in chat the other night said that season four of Demon Slayer is only five chapters in the manga stretched across eight episodes, which is... Like, didn't they literally stretch an entire fucking panel for an episode once? Or maybe someone lied about that and they were just memeing about it. It's insanity. I don't know why they did it. I didn't fucking make it. Why are you asking me? You're, you're like, why, why did they do it? I don't know. It was Money. a terrible decision. Money. They probably felt obligated to make another season, but they weren't ready to adapt the next, you know, Infinity Castle arc. So like, okay, we'll stretch out these five chapters here and people will love to see nothing. Plus they gave the literal worst. But they did though. People did enjoy nothing. Straight up. You go search a Demon Slayer reaction on YouTube from your boy Roshi or a big shonen channel. And I'm saying your boy Roshi's reactions are bad. But there is the episode where Tanjiro and Muichiro are throwing 10 goddamn airplanes. And that shit hit for 100k views. That already shows that there is an audience. They do want to watch this shit. That's the craziest thing, man. First villain, a five minute long scene of him just walking to waste even more time. That, that was egregious. Okay. Okay, no, no, wait. Muzan walking for that long? Yeah, it was a bit egregious. But it was hype. I enjoyed that filler animation. The almost Bollywood-esque production value as Muzan takes each step and there's like 17 different camera angles to emphasize each step. I enjoyed that for the memes. I disagree. I, I, again, I'm not a manga reader, so I don't know what makes him the worst villain. But uh, that walking scene... Mm. Didn't build tension. I it was, was so close to just skipping through it for him to get to the end. What? I don't know who approved that. It was actually probably five minutes. I loved it. I unironically love the extended walking. And the craziest shit is, they like made him walk in episode seven near the end. And that she was hype. And when the finale aired, it was pretty much recap. But the walking was even more extended, dude minutes of him just walking with like this crescendo of music that's supposed to be generating hype and intensity and it was so lame it was super I loved it. underwhelming the whole season I, I'm, I'm a muzan glazer so i enjoyed it but i can understand why people think that like just the walking scene the stalled out walking would be lame i get it and i think it was just such a flop until the last episode it's crazy how much demon slayer fans are defending the fourth season and claiming it's the best season like bro did mm, they forget best the past season? seven episodes i didn't see anyone okay Hot take, I thought that the fourth season was not the best season, but the last episode made me feel hype, anticipation, and some sort of danger that I haven't felt since Entertainment District arc, the battle against, you know, Daki and them. Like, that, and Gyutaro Daki, that shit was dangerous. That shit had me on the edges of my seat. I did not feel that in season three at Swordsmith Village, but it got brought back in the finale. But that doesn't mean that season 4 is the best season. Episode 8 was fantastic. I would say that's a 10 out of 10 episode. Genuinely. I love that shit. Recent memories, I think about one of my favorite anime episodes. It's a Demon Slayer finale for season 4. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. But I also can't just say like the rest of the season was god tier like that. Hell no. Absolutely not. I saying that. I saw actually more fans 
saying that it was really silly to adapt fucking five chapters of the manga into eight episodes to stretch it like that. It is Because it was just boring. It really was. Like, I don't mind slow burn stuff that builds a narrative and character development, but that was not this. Straight up filler. Should I skip all the boring episodes then? I think what you could do with Demon Slayer Season 4... Watch the movie! ...is you could probably condense the first seven episodes into a single episode. Yeah. Because, like, they don't give a ton of backstory on the Hashira. And when they do, it's kind of short, so you could probably fit... What backstories did we get? We got Tomioka, Giyu backstory, right? About the him being, like, a fake Hashira because his friend's clutched and he doesn't feel like he deserves it. We got Gyome backstory. Right? The shitty ass kid who apparently wasn't that shitty, but in the anime, it made it seem like that girl was a just absolute goblin of a girl. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Was it that comprehensive? No. It, it, I, I, they really, again, most of the episode content was filler shit, right? They try to really add in anime original stuff. And I did enjoy some of the anime original stuff. I remember one episode. It was the episode where we kind of speed ran through Mitsuri's training arc, then Iguro, and then Sanami. And then by the time we got to Sanami, we are just like having a brawl. That episode, that anime original content, it was genuinely good. All of like the backstory tiddlywinks they feed you into probably like one episode. And then you pick up from episode 8. And just know Tanjiro went through their training and nailed it first try on, eight, on everything basically. Yeah, I finished Kaiju number 8 today, actually. Kaiju number 8 was really good. Did IGN review yep. Kaiju number 8? Because that slapped. Uh oh I enjoyed that. It's not, like, anything special. It's just kind of normal shonen, but it was done well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's not a unique plot, but it followed the cliches, the template of shonen battle shonen hype, and it, it did it really well. I really had a lot of fun watching it. What did IGN Here. say for Let's Kaiju 8? IGN said about Kaiju number 8. Hey. Great. Kaiju number eight's first season delivers a consistent flow of sci-fi monster fighting splendor while taking ample time to capture the contours of its main cast, raising the stakes for season two. That's a, that's a based rating. Yo, these IGN ratings are actually good. It's like, it's, it's genuinely what the audience thinks. Kaiju eight was fantastically paced. It was nothing special, but they executed it well and it was really fun. Demon Slayer? Holy shit, there was a lot of filler. Finale was great, but goddamn, it was it was pretty slow. I, I think these IGN ratings are pretty good. Hey, I, IGN has some of the worst game reviews you'll ever find. But anime, but I gotta they, be honest, they're on point. They're two for two on the anime reviews in my eyes. I think Kaiju number eight's probably like an eight, maybe like a seven-ish. Nah, 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 nah. Seven, seven's being way too nitpicky for some of the complaints I have. I think minimum eight's probably eight, fair. Minimum eight. It's, it's good. It's actually just good. What are your complaints about Kaiju number eight? Uh, who cares about spoilers? Oh, uh, I yeah. do, I do. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What the fuck you mean? What do you, who cares about spoil? About the anime, not the manga. About the anime. He, I doubt Charlie would read the manga. I think it's gonna be fine. I'm not, well, I don't even know why I'm asking. Chat's always so divided on that. I, I won't bother. I don't have any big complaints. Okay. There's just a couple of things in there that I thought were not, not, not done as well as it could have been. Like, like what? The art style is boring compared to the manga. Don't know the manga, so I didn't have any problem with the art style. I thought it was pretty slick. Especially the- Was there anything bad about Kaiju 8 on the top of my head? I genuinely can't think of anything. Like, what did I want more of? I mean, so, sorry, it's not even what did I want more of, it's just like, what was bad? I can't really pick a single thing. The pacing was fantastic. The fighting animations were fantastic. Soundtracks were fantastic. The story itself is interestingly enough. The art style? I'm not exactly sure. What about the art style that people are mad about? Main character's silliness. Kafka, he even knows silliness. Hmm. I think that like Kafka, obviously he's like a 32 year old man or something and he's trying to get back into prime form and get back to chasing his dreams. He has a lot of heart, but he does seem a little childish for sure. He does not act like a typical 30-year-old person, I guess. Maybe? I, I could maybe see that. He, he's a bit goofy here and there. But that doesn't mean that every, you know, 30-year-old man can't be goofy and, you know, silly like that. Maybe it's just him, you know, hanging on to his lost childhood. I'm not sure. Other than that, I genuinely can't think of much to complain about Kaiju 8 if there is any.
I just wanted more hype fight scenes, but they already gave us so much. I don't know. Division Captain Character 1 Design. Oh yeah, in the finale episode, one of the dudes that showed up, I forgot his name, apparently they fucked up his bangs. These are trip. We're nitpicking at this point, right? These are such non-problems. They're complaints for sure, but it's just like, damn, if we're mad about a guy's fucking bangs, you know? Like the anime's doing a pretty good job then. Their fight scenes. The fights had a lot of style to them. The anime just looks like Boruto characters. Well, I haven't watched Boruto, so don't know the comparison. Boruto All I know is characters? Boruto is like 75% filler. I'm gonna double check my, my numbers because I think it's actually 75% filler. Boruto reactions win. 74% when? of Boruto is filler. Out of the 265 episodes, 74% are filler. Nice. What did IGN give Vinland Saga Season 2? It's such a divisive season. Divisive? <laughs> Probably eight, I right? I think most people agree Vinland Saga Season 2 is like a masterpiece. But there's also a lot of people that remember what Season 1 was all about and got upset about the farming saga and therefore trashed it, right? Except for people that only watch Vinland Saga for fights, I guess. Yeah, Which exactly. Could, they might, that might not be a small number, to be fair. That's a huge number. What did they That's do? That's what Season 1 was all about. All right. Let's see if IGN somehow goes three for three on anime eight. reviews here. It's got to be eight minimum. Vinland Saga season two. I think this shit is eight extraordinary. They gave ten. It ten. Holy Vinland Saga season two part two delivers a masterclass in anime storytelling with one of the greatest character arcs in modern fiction. Some incredible voice acting and stunning animation. And I don't even think this is glaze. I think that like, yeah, it's a probably a reasonable score. Maybe I give it a nine. I haven't, I haven't seen all of season two, but like, I've heard that it's fucking. Also, this looks like a fucking dick, by the way. This necklace right here. Here's the head of the tip, and here's the shaft. But yeah, I think IGN's ratings are pretty fair. All right, they're kind of fucking cooking over there on anime. I gotta be honest. Their anime guy knows his shit. It's looking like it, but. There was someone in chat that said the same anime reviewer gave JJK Shibuya Incident a 6 oh? out of 10. Let's see it. I'm going to double check that. Well, because this guy is valuing the storytelling, right? What does it say? Vinland Saga Season 2 Part 2 delivers a masterclass in anime storytelling. If this reviewer values that more than just the fight scenes, of course he's gonna have a, an opposing view on Jujutsu Kaisen Shibo incident because that's not really storytelling. That's just hype battles. Like every episode is just go, 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 fight, 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 fight. It, totally, I could see this guy rating JJK season two a six out of 10. That, Cause that would immediately throw this whole thing out of whack. It'd be real cattywampus. Cause right now he's on the nose. He's got his finger on the pulse of like good takes here. But a six out of 10 on JJK Shibuya? Oh don't my know about God. it. Don't know so about slippery. that. Oh wait, hold on. I got I gotta know. Ninja Kamui. If hey, we watched that skit from Sylvanas about Ninja Kamui, right? About how trash it was after episode one. It should be a score less than three, then, right? This isn't a three or four out of ten. I'm spitting. Seven. <laughs> By Raphael. It's the same guy who rated Vinland Saga high. Ninja Kamui. Features an all-time great premiere and spectacular action, but it's bogged down by CG fights and a dull plot. Well, he does acknowledge though here, right? He acknowledges that the CG fights are trash and the plot is dull. But how the fuck are you going to give it a 7 after saying that? I guess the storytelling is that good because if Raphael rated Vinland Saga Season 2 as a 10 out of 10, and if he's willing to admit that the CG fights are trash in Ninja Kamui, that means the storytelling must be actually that good, even though the fights are ass, right? Oh, we didn't watch the same show. It's, oh no, he's falling apart. This show is garbage. I can't tell. Did he only he said, watch the first three episodes? Because the first three episodes are amazing. Okay. The first three episodes are great. Maybe he Episode got four hits, immediately AI art, and they switch to mecha. It becomes a mech anime, and the entire budget's been blown out the ass. So they have no money left, and there yeah. is the worst fight scenes ever. It's all CG. It did look Fuck. pretty bad in that one skit we saw. This guy was cooking for a minute, too. Seven for Ninja Kamui is absurd. That's a shame. That's a shame. All right, hold on. There's, there's still plenty of chances for redemption here. What do okay. you give Solo Leveling Season 1? I thought Solo Leveling Season 1. Again, this is Raphael rating it. I don't think that the storytelling was, like, 
as good as Vinland Saga? Absolutely not. Solo leveling was for the fucking hype. The buildup of Sung Jin Mu getting stronger incrementally as he faces challenges. I fear he's gonna give minimum 7, right? Maybe something like a 7? I thought this was like, 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 if he gave... If he gave Ninja Kamui 7... It's gotta be higher than 7. You cannot play solo leveling and Ninja Kamui at the same fucking tier. I'd give this personally probably like an 8-ish. Yeah? I think that's fair. Okay. okay, 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 okay. 8 out of 10, that's fair. That's totally fair. Watching solo leveling season 1 is a lot like playing an MMORPG. The mechanics are a bit tedious, and the writing lacks nuance. Fair. But the anime compensates with addictive power progression and great visuals. Exactly. Solo leveling, I don't think it's trying to be an amer amazing storytelling. No. I think what the, the series is all about is the style, how cool Sung Jin Mu is, and the power fantasy as he gets stronger and as other people starts to witness more of what a monster he is. That progression, the power fantasy is definitely there, and I think 8 out of 10 is perfectly fine. This guy's rating has honestly been very good. Like... If that's the case, that must mean Ninja Kamui for him is like so... Like the storytelling of Ninja Kamui must be fucking great. Even if it's a dull plot, right? Even if the plot is dull, you can still do a decent job of executing that story. So maybe that's why he's valuing it at a 7. Hey, okay, alright. Hey, we're back. We got like a real Jekyll and Hyde thing going on here. <laughs> so leveling was solid, super solid. I'm excited for the second half. Alright, what else? Okay, what else? here we go. Let's see if you JJK! Right. Shibuya Incident. But like... Exactly. Cool fight scenes can't make up for a meandering story. Like, there is no story in Shibuya Incident. It's just a stupid hype arc, and at the very end, Ghetto just announces the Cullen games and, like, what he's been planning. That shit was hype, but that's not really storytelling throughout the whole season. So I could totally see 6 out of 10 from Raphael here. This is a 6 out of 10. This is going to be the biggest discrepancy I've ever seen. This would be even worse than the Ninja Kamui 7 out of 10. Probably. No! <laughs> 6 out of 10. Okay. Jujutsu Kaisen offers plenty of spectacle, but little else during the Shibuya incident arc. And you know what? I think that that is a very based take. What is he valuing the most? Storytelling. He cares about the overall plot and that the way the story is told. But in Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Part 1, I'd say the storytelling was amazing. Remember, this is a rating of part two. We have to go back and see what the part one review is. Because part one, sorry, because part two, I agree. There's no fucking storytelling. It's just hype ass fights and that's the whole point of the part, right? It's not its fault for being a fight arc. But part one, the storytelling was amazing. You can't tell me that the story of the two best friends, Gojo Satoru and Geto, how they started on opposite sides of Gojo hating on the monkeys and Geto saying you need to protect the weak eventually crossing roads as they go through different ideals and eventually you know, leaving each other. I thought part one was an amazing storytelling. But part two, like, yeah, it's, it's just fights. Oh! The tablets were accurate. He gave it a six out of ten. Check part you one. You were meant to bring balance to IGN, not become it. Check part one. Why? How? What, what did he watch? What did he watch? He watched just fight scenes, and he doesn't value fight scenes. He values storytelling. Like, you can absolutely critique the narrative of it, like, calling the, like, the actual story beats dull. Like, okay, I mean, I can give you that. It's not, like, the deepest story in Shibuya Incident, but that's not the point of it either. Like, th there's no world where there should be anything under a 9. Well, it's because Charlie values the fights more than he does. Again, at the end of the day, like, these ratings... It just comes from a person's value system. Everyone values different things about an anime more. Some people value animation only. Some people care about just the fucking story. Some people care about, you know, the voice acting and stuff like that. Some people prefer, you know, um, some people just vehemently hate fightings and they'll just rate fighting shows bad. Like, at the end of the day, it's like a person's core value system. And what does Raphael value? Storytelling. And part two was not much storytelling. I get that. It is undoubtedly inarguably the best action anime has ever had yes. for a whole season for sure and it never stops for sure Damn, i agree such a shame how did this happen he was doing so well he had so many good takes on the anime check part one bro and then it all crumbles i'm not i'm usually not even into anime but jjk got me reading the manga nice it, well, neither is matt matt just started jjk and he's already hooked 
like i think jjk is one of those anime that is like great for people that haven't even enjoyed anime in the past it's just so easily digestible because it's just so fun and like beautiful yeah i gotta see more now now I, i'm, I'm part, one, part, on one, part one part one part one part one go scroll back what motherfucker uh, kind of recently that i saw that i can have part, an opinion on come on go to part oh, one what did bro. he give demon slayer season three because i thought season three Swordsmith village arc Swordsmith village arc what would i rate that shit probably a seven right probably like a seven Six or seven, I think, is fair. I don't think it was overtly amazing. I think it was one of the weakest seasons for Demon Slayer, to be honest. Six or seven. Three wasn't very great either. This was definitely a weak season, too, in my opinion. The upper ranks were really boring. It never really yeah. felt like anyone was in True. danger. And True. they were defeated extremely easily. True. The fucking missed Hashira one-shots him. One of them. Hey. 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 Yeah, five. Man, guy, I don't know, man. <laughs> Mediocre. Demon Slayer Season 3 continues to show you foldable skill at crafting visually stunning action. But the season is bogged down by repetitive and overly long fight scenes and a dull story. Raphael Mota, Mota Mayer, this dude is based. I respect this guy's opinions on anime so far. Even JJK being rated that low, I understand where he's coming from. I think his ratings are perfectly reasonable. And sometimes he's on it. This is a little harsh. I wouldn't give it a five personally. Yeah, like six or seven, a little bit higher. But five, I could understand how you could put a five. But he's at least recognizing. See what he gave to Bleach? Let's see. Thousand Year Blood Year War? There is no fucking storytelling in Thousand Year Blood War. It's just fucking hype battles. So it's going to be low then. Oh, Chainsaw. What do you give Chainsaw Man? Chainsaw Man... Season 1 didn't have good storytelling. It's like season 1, we're just starting to know the characters and get involved, right? It's the early game. Honestly, Chainsaw Man, I think, was overly hyped up for season 1 content. I heard it did pretty bad in sales, too. And then in Japan, anyways. I don't know. Uh, I feel like it should be a 7 or an 8, right? It, it should be somewhere there. I think Chainsaw Man's pretty solid. I, I, think, it's, I think it's good. Not as good as everyone said it was going to be, but still good. It got overhyped. Well, Nine. that's very generous. That's a glaze and a half. Chainsaw Man uses cinematic influences to give this darkly comedic and gut-filled take a prestige TV look that makes it stand out from most action shown in anime. Basically, all that gobbledygook basically means it's very gory and it's cool. How in the... Wait, 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 wait. Okay. How do you give Chainsaw Man Season 1 a 9, nine. but, but JJK. Jujutsu Kaisen fucking Shibuya Incident a 6? Because I think that Chainsaw Man tried to like... They try to make it like cinema, right? And, and what does Raphael value? The storytelling. And I don't think there was really storytelling in Part 2. There was no plot, it was just fight. But in Season 1 of Chainsaw Man... There was a lot of mysteries of what's going on with Makima and Denji. The whole lore of devils. The lore of the gun devil. The premise of every other character set up. I could for sure understand why he would rate Season 1 of Chainsaw Man higher than JJK. 9 is a pretty high score though. But I, I could kind of understand. How? What? Like, I get liking Chainsaw Man. It's good. But it's definitely... It could have been, honestly... Because, like, when Chainsaw Man was airing... The amount of glaze that everybody was having was insane. So he might have been caught up by the hype train. And if he were to go back and rate it again, this 9 might be a little bit lower. Definitely not better than JJK Season 2. For, for like, like no matter how you stretch it, no matter how you spin that. I guess, I, I mean, if you're like Turbo Coomer, possibly. Maybe. It's not even that Coomer content. Oh, you hooked on IGN? Oh, I don't know. We just kind of fell down this. There is some Coomer content. There was, but there was also some immediately anti kumar content, like barfing into that girl's... No, that girl puked into Denji's mouth. It's rabbit hole, and now I'm just super curious. Oh, what do you get, Mob Psycho? Mob Psycho season, th season 3. This shit better be a fucking 9 or a 10 out of 10. Bro, Mob Psycho is a... If you value storytelling, this shit is minimum 8. It should be, it should be like 9. Oh, I can already tell. A masterpiece ending to a masterpiece ten. adaptation. Yeah, ten, 9 or 10. So this it's gotta be, gonna 10. be a 9 or 10. It is an amazing story. Fair. That's right. Mob Psycho 100 Season 3 gives us the show at its very best. One of the most satisfying anime endings ever. I agree. 
Like from start to end, it concluded really well. The everything just like wrapped up so perfectly. Mob Psycho is an amazing watch. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Season 2 might be my favorite arc of Mob Psycho though. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to cover Season 2 on my channel because like Mob Psycho like performed really fucking bad. That was when like I had no sense of community. Like my channel was dead, so it just did really bad. So I kind of just skipped it and watched it on my own. But Season 2, holy shit. The fight scenes at the end of Season 2, the battle against Clock organization, fucking crazy. I say the conclusion of Season 2 was more hype than the conclusion of Season 3, but anyways. I love Mob Psycho. Ooh, what do you give My Hero Season 6? That's the most recent season. Is it? No, this is October 3rd, 2022. So, the most recent season is Season 7. I haven't seen MHA, but I'm interested. I am not a My Hero fan anymore. I think it really fell off, unfortunately. I but don't even watch it. It is starting to get a little better. I haven't started the new season yet, though. But what did he give Season 6? An 8. That's very... You guys agree with this? Is season 6 an 8 out of 10? I heard that season 6 was super high. Like, people were like comparing this shit to like fucking Marineford arc in like One Piece, bro. So I'm like, damn, it's really like that? Like, I heard season 6 was like an insane all-out war kind of arc. It was not that high? Season 6 was supposed to come back arc? It was that season 5? That was- I don't even know. I don't even- I don't, I don't watch My Hero. I, I'm just like taking random comments off of people saying different shit, but... 8 out of 10 is pretty good. Very ge That's so generous. That's so generous. That's just for the premiere? Oh, you're right. This is just the premiere. Premiere review. Where's the Where's the season? Did I pass it? Oh, yeah. Here. I don't know. You're right. That was just the premiere. Okay, the overall season. Nine! Whoa. Even higher! Even Whoa. higher! My Hero Academia delivers its best season yet with season 6. Its character arcs, themes, and plots arrive at a hard-hitting climax with stunning fights, emotion, devastating moments, and shocking reveals. Yo, they hyping this shit up. Even the poster looks amazing. It makes me want to watch this shit. Oh god. That's is so it, generous. Is it that bad? Okay, I just gotta- I, 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 I gotta know. How do you love the story for my hero, yeah. but hate the story for JJK Shibuya? Like- <laughs> I don't know. Maybe bro hates fucking JJK. Yeah, the story is... I don't know. I've never seen MH. I can understand why people think there's no story in Shibuya, but like, I, I, I don't... I haven't seen season six. I don't fucking know. That does, I, I don't know. There's just something that... It's not clicking to me. I don't get it. I don't Maybe get it. Maybe just a JJK hater, man. What don't you like about My Hero is the first anime I watched? I used to really like My Hero. The problem with My Hero became its pacing, and they kept focusing on the most uninteresting parts of the show. And every single episode, the big revelation was Deku saying... I gotta protect my friends. <laughs> That's like you know every what? shonen. I will overcome this because of my friends. I need to protect my friends. That's every shonen. Every couple episodes. Then, but I need to do my entrance exams to protect my friends. And then in the entrance exam, or in the fucking uh, licensing exams or whatever, in order to protect my friends, I'm going to need this license. Okay. I can't protect my friends without a license. I mean, that's the they whole do that, show, like, though. Three seasons, basically. So they'll do like one of them. Then they'll have a good season. Then they go yeah. right back to needing like a provisional license and then a decent season and then license and then train. I don't know what these licenses are, but it sounds like downtime arcs. So it, like immensely hypes arcs and then boom, there's a bit of quote unquote filler, not filler, but low energy moments where you're getting licenses, whatever the fuck that means. Sounds like a training arc or something. And then you go back in. So yeah. Training <laughs> and then finally done with it. It's just they focus on the worst parts. But man, I used to like my hero. They used to be really good. And I really like the first, uh, what was it? The entrance, not the entrance exam. Whatever the first season focused on, whatever that was that led up to the tournament. Should we watch My Hero Academia? Well, honestly, I don't think people would watch My Hero Academia on my channel. Like, people don't even want to watch Black Clover or Hunter x Hunter. Why would I expect people to vote My Hero Academia in? So, yeah. That was good. And then they just kept doing it every fucking season. I mean, sometimes this guy's on it, sometimes a little off. But overall, as far yeah. as IGN goes, Raphael's he's kind of he's he's, he's cooking. Kinda cooking sometimes. He's cooking hard, bro. IGN's usually one of my least what, favorite. What, what, what is Raphael's? Okay, let's see. Raphael Motamer, uh, freelance freelance writer. 
Raphael is contributing freelance for IG and convert, uh, covering everything anime and animation. He has over five years of experience in the animation industry with bylines at Vulture, IndieWire, and more. He was also part of the New York Press Club award-winning team of writers. When he isn't writing, you can find him trying to catch up on new seasonal anime before realizing how impossible that is, relatable, or thinking about how great Lost was. He has a relatively healthy obsession with model kits and posts all about them on Twitter. I think that Raphael honestly has some great takes, and even if he hates JJK, that rating, it seems very low, but understanding what he values, it kind of makes sense. He's honestly cooking, bro. He's honestly giving, like, <laughs> might I say, better opinions than Gigook. IGN's usually one of my least favorite places to check for reviews because it's so off, but I I'm agreeing with some of his here. More, yeah. I agree with more of his than I do disagreeing. Nah. Genuinely, he, was, he has great content. That was a pretty fun watch. We just wanted to check over random Charlie content just covering anime, but hey, I don't know if he... <laughs> Yo, hey, Chuck. hey, this is not the channel. Thoughts on go, go give his second channel. <laughs> I don't know, check it out, I guess. It's, uh, he does have like the moist meter and different, you know, anime-related content. He reviews stuff like that, but that's it for me.